Hello everybody, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Originally, this was just supposed to be a quick video showing the performance of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 5700 XT running Fortnite Chapter 2 at 1440p across a wide range of settings. At first, everything was going as planned and we saw some really pretty decent frame rates on epic settings and overall the game was pretty smooth in general. However, once we started dropping the settings and increasing our FPS, it quickly became apparent that something was not quite right. While our frame rate was generally pretty decent, we were seeing these random bouts of extreme judder caused by very unstable frame times. You may have heard people calling this stuttering or micro stuttering in the past. While these may not come through all too well on the video, you can keep an eye on that frame rate graph in the overlay. Ideally, you want this to remain a smooth line, and when it's all over the place like it is in this footage, that means that the frame times are very unstable, which leads to judder when above your maximum refresh rate, and stutter when below it. Initially, I assumed that maybe this was going to be something driver related since I'd not actually played Fortnite in quite a while and the last time I did, the game ran fine. After spending a good couple of hours trying out lots of different driver versions, reseating the GPU and reinstalling Fortnite, I finally caved in and took to Reddit to see if anyone else was having these issues. And yes, it appears that most people, especially those running the game at higher frame rates, are indeed having problems and unfortunately, nobody has managed to find a fix. Based on my own testing, this does not appear to be a traditional CPU, GPU, memory or storage bottleneck sort of problem. It's possible that it could be down to a bandwidth limitation, but in that case, when we're seeing the issue on high-end hardware, that would still place the blame firmly on the game engine, in this case Unreal Engine 4, rather than your own hardware. I want to be very clear, as of right now, there is no outright fix, at least not one that's been shared publicly. Going off what I've learned during my many hours of testing and experimenting, we are going to be able to minimise these stutters. However, since this is highly likely going to be a game engine issue, the only people that are truly going to be able to fix it are Epic and hopefully pretty soon as it appears to be affecting a huge percentage of their player base. Now, normally, since we only manufacture AMD hardware, we would only approach this in terms of AMD. However, as part of my testing, I did get the game running on an NVIDIA 1080 Ti in order to confirm that it was not an AMD specific issue, and it's not, we saw the exact same symptoms on said 1080 Ti. The good news is that the methods that we're going to look into in this video to minimise the stutter do appear to work on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, at least from the limited selection that I was able to test. If you are still a little bit confused to what this stutter is, it basically appears to be an issue caused by loading in and out objects or textures when you bring them into view. I'm not going to pretend like I fully understand the inner workings of game engines or graphic APIs, but I can at least show you what I mean. If we jump into the playground and land around Frenzy Farm, I personally like this wooden fence next to the cart on the hill overlooking the farm, you get to see the worst case scenario of what we are talking about. While the frame rate will stabilise while not moving the camera, as soon as the camera does move, the frame times will fluctuate wildly, making the mouse feel horrible, and it's this that we are looking to minimise. Before we jump into these methods, I think it's important for me to quickly tell you what does not work when it comes to fixing these stutters. I've seen quite a lot of YouTube videos doing the rounds, all talking about how to fix stutters and boost your frame rate in Fortnite, and I've even followed like a dozen of them. They almost all cover the exact same steps, such as messing with the configs, adding lots of stuff to the command line, and changing stuff in Windows. These videos are not going to do anything when it comes to this particular issue. I don't doubt that some people, especially on lower end systems, are going to see some benefits from following these kind of guides, but these are mostly going to come from generally cleaning up your Windows install, so I've linked a video from a YouTuber called Battle Nonsense in the description below that covers the general tips and tricks to optimising your computer for gaming. With that said, we are going to look into a few different methods to reduce the stuttering and the first one is actually going to be the reason why not everybody was affected by the stuttering in the first place, and that's because it's simply playing on very high settings. The reason for this is simple, the stutter slash judder is caused by frame time variance at higher frame rates, so providing that your FPS is pretty low, that variance is already eliminated. In this case, since it's highly likely that you're going to end up being GPU limited, enabling Radeon Anti-Lag or NVIDIA Low Latency is going to help reduce your input lag, so I recommend doing so. You can do this on AMD by bringing up the Radeon overlay and going over to the game experience and toggling it on from there. The next method is going to be for people running variable high refresh rate displays, so we're talking about FreeSync here on AMD or G-Sync over there on NVIDIA. 
First of all, you're going to want to make sure that you've got FreeSync or G-Sync enabled, and then you're going to want to check that it's set to the highest refresh rate. If you're on Windows 10, you can do this by going over to your display settings by typing display settings in the taskbar, then click advanced display settings at the bottom, click display adapter properties for the display that you're going to be gaming on, go over to the monitor tab, and then select the right refresh rate in the drop down menu. After you've done this, you're going to want to boot up the game and jump into your settings. Here, we want to set the FPS limit that is lower than your maximum refresh rate. In our case, since we're running at 144Hz, we are going to cap our frame rates at 120. And then we want to also enable VSync. Now, don't worry, doing this is not going to add any perceivable input delay. I know that there's still a lot of confusion around variable refresh rate displays when it comes to input lag, but trust me, I've done my homework, and I will even link a couple of sources down in in the description below if you want to read up on it yourselves. The reason why we want to be using VSync in this method is that it does indeed have an effect on frame pacing and so will minimise a lot of the variance while showing as many frames as physically possible as soon as possible. Now, as you should be able to see from the frame rate graph in this footage, the frame times are still all over the place, and yet, due to how the technology works, the game manages to feel super smooth and responsive since we are still in that sweet spot below the maximum refresh rate of the monitor. Hands down, until the developers come up with a fix, this is without a doubt going to be the very best way to play the game at the moment. On a side note, since we are using the in-game FPS cap, we are also going to want to disable Radeon Anti-Lag and Nvidia Low Latency mode, since when the GPU is not the limiting factor, it can actually increase input latency. Again, if you're on AMD, you can do this super easily on the fly by using the Radeon Overlay. Moving on, our third method is more an informative choice rather than a decent solution. This is for those people without access to a variable refresh rate monitor and those that will prefer not capping their FPS. During my many hours of testing, I came to the conclusion that the one setting that really influenced the stutter was surprisingly the texture setting. When you set this to low, you will have bad frame times and in some cases frame rates any time that you move the camera. However, once you go up to the epic texture setting, you will see more stable frame times when moving the camera and you also shouldn't be getting the big frame drops that we see with a low setting. But the downside is that you can see some bigger FPS drops when doing large flicks with the mouse. To be clear, these drops when performing large flicks, in my honest opinion, are nowhere near as bad as the constant stuttery movement that we see on the low settings. And they only actually appear when you're high up overlooking large sections of the map the vast majority of the time. A good compromise here does appear to be the high texture setting that does not have the constant niggles that we see on the lower settings, but also does not drop quite as low when flicking the mouse as what we see on Epic. This is going to have to be a choice that you guys have to make, but hopefully, at least understanding the issue a little bit better should at least relieve a little bit of that frustration. In this situation, you should once again mostly be GPU limited, so I would ensure that I've got Radeon Anti-Lag or Nvidia Low Latency modes enabled. Also, you should avoid using either AMD Enhancing or Nvidia FreeSync here because the frame pacing is so bad at the moment that it's going to cause much bigger stutters or even worse, full on frame drops. If you're someone like me that really hates screen tearing, then maybe the final method that we're going to take a look at is going to be the right one for you. This is by far the most complex of the bunch and is going to require you to do a little bit of work, but hopefully you will be happy with the end results. This would also be a good time to point out that this method does actually work well in general and ends up being a very good alternative for anyone that's looking to reduce the input lag associated with traditional vSync. For this method, we are going to require a copy of RTSS, which is a free program that enables you to limit your frame rate down to decimal places while maintaining incredibly stable frame times. Once again, I will leave a link to the software down in the description below. I'm also going to leave a link to a well-written tutorial by the guys over at Blurbusters that you can follow along with if you're struggling to understand what I'm doing in this video. If you do decide to follow the Blurbusters tutorial, please do avoid the scanline method that they are currently pushing. While this works great in many titles, it requires very stable frame times in order to work properly, so in this case, it's not going to do anything to help us with our problems. The basic premise here is that when you cap your frame rate below your refresh rate when vSync is enabled, you get to see some really big reductions to the input latency associated with vSync. Normally, this would be done by people using a config to cap their FPS to let's say 119 for a 120Hz display. This would indeed reduce the input latency, but the trade-off would be a pediatric stutter. Not to mention, most frame rate limiters, even those built into the games themselves, rarely offer the same level of stability that we see from RTSS. This would mean that even when capping to 119 for a 120Hz display, we would still sometimes see our frame rate hit 120 and thus see an increase in our input latency. 
But anyway, once you've got RTSS installed, you're going to want to go over to the website vsyncTester.com and follow the instructions over there. Basically, we want to figure out what our exact refresh rate is because in order to minimize the vsync input lag, we are going to need to cap our FPS using RTSS a single hundredth below our monitor's real refresh rate. This monitor that I'm using is generally around the 119.997 mark. So with RTSS, we are going to want to cap the frame rate at around 119.98 or 119.99. You will likely need to play around a little bit, but once you hit the right frame cap, you should be able to notice your game feeling incredibly smooth with very low input latency. Now, boot up the game and go into the settings menu. Here we are going to want to enable VSync, ensure that the game is running in full screen mode, make sure that you've got the textures set to how you want them based on the previous method, personally I like to use the high setting, and then we want to also set the in-game FPS limit to 120. Since we are not going to be running into a GPU limited scenario, you are also going to want to turn off Radeon Anti-Lag. Also, since we are relying on VSync and RiverTuner to help us with the frame pacing, make sure that you're not running AMD Enhanced Sync or Nvidia Fast Sync. Once all this is done, you should finally be ready to jump into the game and try it out for yourself. The reason that low lag VSync works is because by being below your refresh rate, your GPU is prevented from queuing up additional frames in the buffer, meaning that your display in theory should be receiving the most recently fully rendered frame. One thing that I will quickly mention is the sound quality. It appears that setting the sound quality to low can actually help reduce some frame drops for some people, but I don't think it's related to the issue that I'm focusing on in this video, but it could at least be worth trying out on both high and low to see what works best for you. Also, the multi-threaded rendering option is something that I personally turn to off as I believe, although I'm not sure, that it can reduce input lag while disabled at the cost of a few frames. However, if you're going to be capping your FPS and you're able to maintain that cap under normal circumstances, then I really don't see the harm in disabling it. If everything is working as intended, you should now have a very playable game on your hands. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not a fix for the stuttering issue itself, but it should at least minimize it to a level where it's not going to ruin your experience. Fingers crossed, Epic will actually have a fix up very soon because I for one hate having to do these sorts of dodgy workarounds. That said, if this dodgy workaround helped you out, then please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. If you like this video, then you can like the video, and if you disliked it, there's a button for that too. All we ask is that you let us know why in the comment section below. If you've got any questions, suggestions, or feedback, we would love to hear from you. However, for now, that is going to be me done for today. I really hope that this helps at least a few of you out. But anyway, from myself and everyone here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we will catch you later. Bye-bye.